hello. How are you? I hope you're doing well. I have a new library to show you. I'm so excited to show you. It's called String Theory Orchestrator. And that is because I sampled. My Krumar Orchestrator. Uh, it is down here. In fact, I could call up. This is. Yes, I'm playing the violins and the cellos at the same time, so I would be able to go. That's how it sounds in Unify. Here it is on the crew mark. Hear how it rings in forever and ever and ever? I actually have release samples set up. And the release... I don't have it ringing out as long as it should ring out really long like that. But I, you can adjust that as you can see with the macro knobs because we have controls for that. But now on. So anyway, this <laughs> I tend to get out of order a little bit, but let's keep this really kind of concise at the beginning so I can tell you what's going on. There are 11 sounds from my Krumar that I have sampled. There's the violin and cello. There's just cello by itself. There's violin by itself. There's, I believe, four or five brass presets, including more non-resonant and then a couple of resonant and then a warm brass. Um, the clav, which is this kind of clavish kind of sound. Don't know how useful that is, but I sampled it. The piano, which is quite famous for the... The beginning of Radiohead's amazing song. I actually made a patch down here called In Its Right Place where I tried to match it to the record with the click and everything. Because they did some sort of processing and they like compressed the daylights out of it on that record. Um, so I made a variation on the piano because the piano by itself was just more bright. bright. Nice, but you know, synth piano. Um, as well as the bass, which is this really, really cool, solid. So I sampled all those. I did two passes every other note so that I would have a really concise, nice map of the instruments. There's over 35 samples per each of the passes. And then the mono patches that you see, the M, are mono. So if I go, here's one of the brass patches. That's because it's uh, I'm, it's actually two samples. Pass one and pass two are layered on top of each other, which in Unify's language means it's confused. And so it will just randomly choose between whatever samples are assigned to the same notes. So you get true random round robin. If you layered 12 different samples on top of each other, then it would randomly choose between all 12 of them. And you can't do it in a sequence or something like that. Now for the stereo version, I have that first pass on the left, the second pass on the right. And then I use a sample delay so that when you collapse it back to mono, uh, I made sure there's no phasing across the keyboard so it still sounds good in case it needs to be played in mono. So that's the case with all this. So you have mono. But unlike other libraries, you also have stereo. It's great. For all 11 of the instrument samples from the Krumar that I sampled. On top of this, I went through um, a number of the Krumar sounds. I ran them through different um, effects and processors, fragments from Arturia, other granular engines and other things to create the core samples, which are granular, really cool sound designing more things. Right? Um, even the brass came out super cool. These brass are really... Right? So you have a number of these. I believe there's seven different granular patches. On top of this, I went onto Craigslist and I found somebody that was selling a Radio Shack vintage cassette player. <laughs> Still works. Um, Battery powered. 
I set this up, I hit record, I put this by my nice Genlex speakers, and I played the Kumar. And I sampled it. And then I took, there's a line out on this, and I ran it into my computer and recorded the audio from the tape, played back from the cassette player, and boy does it sound horrible. But... You can do really cool things when you filter this and you do things to it. Um, you can also do other things to like turn it into. I have a one patch right here. I can show. I'm going to do your walkthrough in a second, but uh, you know that kind of thing. All sorts of things. On top of that, I also to, to just to, because I want to make this more than just Krumar. Because if it's just Krumar, then only if, you know some of you guys are going to buy this. Others will be like, well, I don't. I don't really need a Kumar. It's nice. Cool with the phaser. I, I like Jean-Michel Jarre and Gary Wright and all those guys just like anybody else. But I wanted to take it farther. And so there is also uh, in the core, you'll notice that there's two different string pads at the end. There's a vintage. Uh, kind of that big Juno 60 kind of thing. And then more of a kind of boxy. So all of those together, I've made 115 patches. And I've gone through, I asked the uh, Unify Power Users Group on Facebook to give me the names of songs that had sent string parts that they liked. And so if you go up here and you search by song, there's over 20 songs that I have taken and, you know, Um, from there all the way to Flashlight and P-Funk used the Krumar in such a cool way. In fact, there's images tied to every one of these patches so that when you click the little artwork, you're going to get an image. If I go to one of these granular synth patches over here in the core. Let's see, I'm in song right now, but if I could have a song for a second. If I go to like the core, these will be showing you really cool, more like, oh my gosh, you know, I use Mid Journey AI art to do these types of images. Um, if you get to the Kumar itself and you click an image and take a look here, it's actual photos I took of my orchestrator. So, you know, uh, oh, those shouldn't have this. Well, or maybe they do because it's the same thing. But anyway, I went through and there's 35 photos in total that I used and took pictures of that are randomly used on different images as you're going through this. So uh, it's kind of fun. Right? So I'm going to give you a walkthrough of the library. It's 2.25 gigabytes, I believe, in size. It's a lot of samples. Um, on top of everything else, there's a drum kit. Just a handful of samples, a couple of like CR78 in here and stuff like that as well. Um, at the very top of the list, there's actually a whole bunch of different patterns, which are really fun. If you go like this and you say, go over here and say unify layer and you choose like, well, let's choose like the brass bright but closed so we say stereo of that and let's say stereo of just the violins by themselves <laughs> and then turn these guys down because they're far louder than the drums so you have sounds to match the vibe uh, there's a couple of BPM splits I'll show you in a second here that are really fun. Um, hidden grooves on the mod wheel, stuff like that. So it's a fun library. Uh, it's on a crazy introductory price for the first couple of weeks as usual. And then it's uh, at a very fair price for what this uh, gives you, the, the Krumar vibe. Very accurately recorded. As I showed you, if we go over here, it's, it's normal. I've got a lot of macro knobs set up, as you can see. So if I go over here to like the violin and cello, would you play? Yeah. 
you've got brightness, body's base EQ, you've got um, the brightness has bright EQ att attached to it, so if you go this way, it gets even brighter. Right? And then note on attack is the fading in. Then release, you can make them longer if you want to make it even more like a pad. And you hear the note offs. I have used trigger box to re-trigger those samples to try to recreate. Because of the way the Krumar made it sound, what's interesting with this is I could play every note. They all play. It's 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 one of those weird things because this has been the time before polyphonic synths were scanning the keyboard with the single processor. So each one of these notes is actually tied to its own little instrument uh, hardware to recreate the sounds that it can create. So it can all play them all at once. Uh, so I'm using a, a note off trick with a uh, trigger box to play samples. You can turn it down if you don't want that. Or you can bring it up if you want even more of it. And then if you go to note off release to make that really long and stuff like that. So you have all sorts of controls to work with. Uh, to to change the sound a bit if you want, so it's 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 very flexible. Uh, came out really nice. I'm really happy with how this turned out. It it does far more than I expected it to do. So uh, I'm really happy to have gotten the idea of like, oh, it was, let's let's just make this more like a pad string Nirvana, right? So that's the concept for the library. Uh, I'm gonna do a patch walk through. So let's start. There's uh, five bases. Um, there's actually a BPM split patch. I'll show you this right here called Midnight Chase. <laughs> the mod wheel lets you chains. Oh, I should go over here and set this like that so you can see what I'm playing. Uh, the mod wheel uh, can turn off the arpeggiator and turn off the drums. If you bring this up a little bit, you'll play the sequence without the drums. Then if you bring it up a little bit more, kick drum, bring it up a little bit more, hi-hats, all the way up you get a snare drum, and then up here, you get that kind of really phaser. So you have the whole groove to play with if you so desire, but um, up here is just the bass. Right? Um, Krumar Acoustic. This is using the Krumar bass, some FM patches. I did some custom programming to the FM bass to give it a little... attitude in there uh now oxygen this is um well here i'll show you there's a bpm split i'll, I'll kind of go back and forth but there's a B, this is one of those that uses the mod wheel again as a cool trick where you can bring up the mod wheel and it plays a very recognizable pattern that we love from the 70s in that's what i started this video with Right? You know, so you can do that kind of fun stuff. Um, so more oxygen is that bass. I used OBXD because it's just so great for that. Uh, slow car. Okay. Well, this is another one that's from a really, really cool BPM split patch. I love this. I'm one of my biggest influences as a kid, not biggest, but one that I loved playing. I had cassette tapes of uh, dance. And there's a, there's a two-sided cassette. The other side had another album. I didn't play that one so much. I love dance. And one of my favorite songs was Slow Car. Got a slow car. So 
I went kind of vibey and kind of chilled out and bring up the mod wheel and you get this cool drum groove. I should dim the lights. Cool kind of moody synth up high. And then because Gary Newman plays bass, vibe to it and then I use two different FM synths um, that are doing a really cool thing with random timing for the pad up here it's using jitterbox to just randomly spit out the notes and the probability is really low and if you bring a probability And I have it all set up so that the pitch bin doesn't affect the right hand, the drums don't go away, the drums don't change pitch, so you can play chords, then come down here and do things with the bass and pitch bin. kind of fun to play with anyway so this bass slow car is that bass a uh, solid contender just cool with the the krumar bass and with obxc together i did 10 drum patterns so and you can actually use the pattern knob here to cycle through them and it tells you the name of the pattern up here but I made them separate patches if you want to just call up without having to call up and move the knob. You don't have to do that. So it's pop rock, techno, and tech yes. Thought police, which was used for slow car. Uh, stop pop. Right? Corporate. And then just hi hats. Right? Uh, BPM pads. Oh my gosh, these are so fun. There's a whole bunch of these. Kind of like a candy store once you get into these guys. It's combining the Krumar and the granular and the string pads. It's just wonderful. Pump houses are doing their thing in there. Uh, happy Stringy Memories. Stuff like that. Magic Surrounds Me. Just take that and go crazy with... Um So it's not just Krumar. I hope you get the vibe right. It's not just Krumar. You're not just getting an emulation of a synth from 45 years ago. All right, Osmosis involved. It's just so beautiful sounding. Uh, Phaser McShorty. I, I told you about that string that, that I sampled that was really big for the Juno 60 kind of vibe. There it is. Right? Uh, Pulse Diver. Floating around the sun. Mm -hmm. 
right? Slow car. That pad with the BPM elements. So if you go over here to probability, bring that up. And what that's doing is it's opening up the trigger box note probability. So as I bring this up, it's actually a 16th note pattern that um, MIDI box is playing. It's trying to play, but trigger box is being like a gate. It's only letting a small percentage of those sounds come out. Now this is a crazy patch. I called it string theory because it's kind of like, this is like the epitome of this whole library in one thing because it starts like this. Bring down the mod wheel. So you can like do the whole music production thing. Uh, it's it's fun, 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 fun stuff. So <laughs> string theory, uh, string school dancing. Really heavy use of pump house in there. So when you put the drum groove, it's gonna pop out in the right places. Uh, Whipper wheels in winter. This is just one of those weird ones. You can get lost playing this one. Trust me, I've. I've been deep down the whipper wheel's hole, my friends. Isn't it nice? This is using the new phaser. I love phase more. Without it, it just sits there. But because of phase more, it's at seven stages right now, we could take it all the way up to 10 stages if we wanted to. And there's some fun stuff. CC Rider is changing some LFO uh, intensity things. So you hear things coming in and out. Really, really fun. Uh, slow car, I showed you earlier. Mod wheel up. No matter what you play, it just sounds like you know what you're doing. Hear the phaser on a synth. I it's study this patch, there's a lot going on. Uh, dancing in zero G. Stuff like that. Midnight chase, I showed you, right? Oxygen overdose for the uh, genie situation. I don't know why I called it that. It's like reggae meets Jean-Michel. <laughs> uh, so then we get to the core. By core, I define that as these are just the samples without any programming parameters assigned to them. So it's, it, these are like straight for you to like program, take off on adventures with these if you want. As you can see, some of these I programmed with a node off so it would emulate the uh, Krumar. But if you want, you can hold down option and just click the little bullet so you just have the one layer. 
Because layer one is what the main thing is. Okay, so grandioso is grandioso. Gentle. Just have these splashes of octaves. Cello continuum. Activision. The granular crates are brass. I let this one use bigger pieces of the samples. So it's got a granular more chunky vibe to it, which is kind of fun. Uh, spheres. I think I use fragments for this one because you could do all this really cool fast stuff. And just so you know, for these, this is not just one sample. These are multiple samples up and down the keyboard. Not as many as the actual full crew mark, but enough that you can play it and it's not like Mickey Mouse at one place and like slow molasses in other places. Uh, here are the Radio Shack <laughs> Krumar, uh, the violin and cello, it even sounds like it's coming from speakers, it's really kind of cool. Okay, then the vintage analog is your very warm Juno 60S. And these are fun to go over here. Let's see, sample start. Move this later, like all the way to the end. And again, you probably have to open this up to get in here to, to change these parameters the way you want. It's just huge, 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 huge. Love it. Uh, vintage hybrid strings. Nice for that kind of thing. Now the Kumar Orchestra, I put it at the very beginning. I added an extra space to show up at the front of the list because this is like the brass and the strings and the bass all playing at once for the... Uh, Give you that whole vibe. Like you'd have to do four separate passes of a Krumar to do this. And you're doing it in real time because there's four layers playing. Um, giants come to play. You know, that kind of the thing. Uh, now, here, these are just the instruments by themselves, the bass. And I let it go the whole keyboard range. It doesn't do that on the Krumar, but we did here. So it's bright, but closes. So you hear it start bright and then close. The ones that are bright and open stay open. Right? This is a good place to show also on the second page is a chorus. That kind of a vibe. Now the res, there's two. There's fast and slow. And then there's slow. Uh, then warm. Kind of thinking like French horns. 
kind of a vibe. Clavish, again. It's cool to layer. I can see some things like that. I think it's layered with a couple of the patches here and there, but it's, it's kind of a stick out kind of sound. And then the, these are just lovely. The, this violin and cellos. So on the Krumar, there's two buttons for cellos and for violins. So as you'll see in the pictures, I think I did, this one doesn't show it, but somewhere in here, one of these, if you click, you'll see it sees right here, cello and violin, two separate buttons. And so I sampled them both uh, with both cello and violin on. Here's cello. And the main difference is that the low end, left end has octaves. Whereas the violins don't. So it's, it's not quite as big and bombastic. And when you put the two together, it's... Even more bombastic. The piano. And I didn't loop these, so this is the full length samples. Fades out just like it does on the Krumar. Um, and then we have that's <laughs> yeah, that's the one thing with the note offs. If you let things fade out to zero and then you let up on the sustain, they're not gonna sound quite that smooth as you want. But uh, so that's the Krumar. And uh, it's, it's wonderful, wonderful sounds. I just love the vibe. And having both the release samples makes it super authentic, but also having it in stereo, I think is really nice. For times when you need a little bit more width and more like, this makes a nice scoop in the middle for you to put other sounds, um, right? So I showed you in the right place. Right? Uh, pipe continuum. Kind of for the next Coldplay single. Retro distorted both as a duo. Electric pianos. Plus more. And then retro distorts. It seems nice. So uh, the morning bell, this is from a, a Radiohead song. Actually, I think it's minor. That's just, you know that one? So you can play, um, your minor major chords uh want to chill for a while kind of nice now we get to all this oh my gosh there are so many pads and strings auto panning by using two lfos one at 180 phase off for the left and the right side. So that's a kind of fun trick. A dramatic ascension. Here's Dreamweaver for the chorus. I, I can't remember the chords. The, uh, I think this plays octaves, <laughs> really. And then for the introduction, uh, for that kind of a vibe, epic grandioso. And 
And then these are filter crescendos. These are kind of fun because it starts dark, crescendos up, and then goes away. And then there's delays that will pick up on the reflections of the filter coming down. So there's th three of them. Fast. And if you want these to be even more dramatic, just go over here to the filter envelope. This is the intensity for the filter envelope. Bring that up and... Okay. And then theory. Cool having the filter just kind of like shaping and soaking the sounds. Hype it dreams. You hear orchestral elements and you hear synthetic elements, which is fun. Uh, just single octave, not. I'll see. So. so here's Love is Alive. Love is alive. So you can do that kind of stuff. Melantonin. I believe it's a Radiohead track. I don't remember the parts, but I I matched the vibe of it, so it's got that going on. Here's your cool big octaves, the whole keyboard. Um, oxygen in this sense. Raise the bet. Fun things like that. Uh, slow car is that really cool moody pad. Now with nothing but just the pad. If you go here to the macro knobs. Just one for this patch, but it's a really good knob. Uh, solid warmth. Just right there to support. Doesn't go anywhere if you want brightness. Again, you also have body to make it bigger or a little bit light, more lightweight. Okay, super silky royalty. Kind of that kind of a vibe. Then we go to strings. Um, Kumar and granular together. Angel Wings. I think it's based on a song. Um, yeah, from Renaissance. And, uh, what's fun with all the suggestions of different songs is it just gives you ideas of different ways to make this so you don't make the same string pad over and over again. So I got that to play with. Uh. Okay. 
okay, so you got the string kind of thing, the card. I'm using O B X D for just a nice detuned LFO y thingy to go along with the right? And together you beautiful digital symphonic. So you have strings for every possible from gentle and simple. Now this is based on uh, William Orbit's um, you know the the big um, the adagio that he did that says for that type of a thing. Um, Lay all your love on me. I believe this is the Abba pack, right? Um, I'd have to play it to remember how to play it, but. So that is for that. Level Terrace Apart is another one for Joy Division. Nice bit of swirl, but it's clear. Very Kumar, but with really long envelopes, so it's more for the moody. And if you need to soften it up even more, just go to chorus, bring it up more. Magical slow phase. Okay. And so here's moving in stereo. For the cars track from the... Back in the day, uh, two parts for oxygen. A and B, and it describes in the text for these. Where you use those uh, superhero Arco. Getting all sorts of different vibes out of this stuff, right? Uh, vintage Swell. Not dramatic. It doesn't go swimming all over the place. It just sits there nicely. And if you want a little bit more room between the chord transitions, go to the release right here and bring this up and then it will take more time to go away. So you have a little bit more time to like breathe if you want, right? Uh, then we get to synth. Uh, I did a couple things with the brass. And then we get to the P-Funk kind of thing. Uh, flashlight. And these here, I've got some kind of fun, cool, funky images for playing funky. Which I'm failing at. Uh, phased and in love. Kings of the Age of Kings and Dragons. Got 
strong emphasis on the brass and then brass master for the finale. <laughs> There you go. So it's a fun library. Uh, it's a tribute to the Krumar. It's such a cool instrument. I'm never getting rid of mine. I love the vibe of it. So it's fun. And it's fun to have it in this way to present to you guys. So you don't have to go buy one of these because they're not totally cheap. And there's not a lot of them around. Um, I've seen <laughs> I saw one for sale that looked like it had been in a battle zone. All the all mine has every one of them. The knobs are there. Every knob was missing. It was so sad. I, it was like looking at a patient in a hospital after a car wreck. It was just, I felt bad for it. Uh, so <laughs> that's not the case with this one. We're going to keep it that way. But if you would like to have those sounds and all the other unique things in this library, then String Theory is your jam. And I thank you for your support as always. And we'll see you in the next videos. Okay. So thanks. See you later.